Good evening. Welcome to the Arizona Deliverance Center. Welcome to Hardcore. Got a good Bible study for you tonight. If you're considering visiting Phoenix, I wouldn't do it. The weather tricked us. It got nice and cool there, and then, uh, then it uh, backslid. Do not come here now. It's going to be a good night. I forgot. I got. I remember my uh, laser beam. Increases the anointing. I don't know why. All right. It's fun time now. We'll do some announcements. YouTubers, I want to say something to you real quick. Uh, thank you for all the money you sent in to pay for this plumbing disaster we had last year. It uh, ran us about $120,000 to fix the whole gigantic disaster. And uh, the insurance company reimbursed us eighty. And then you guys made up the difference. So, oh man, thank you. Put all the money back in the building fund I had taken out to pay all these bills. It was a disaster with a capital D. And the good Lord came through as usual. That's when he performs best when there's a disaster. That's when he really picks it up. So anyway, YouTubers, man, thank you for saving us. And thank you for paying the bills here. We is grateful. Amen. Well, let's do some, some fun stuff, stuff here and do the announcements. Those are a blast. Usually get a lot of laughs during the announcements. Here's our, uh, our teachings. They're all on there. Probably about 400 of them. YouTube.com slash House of Healing AZ. We're broadcasting there tonight on YouTube. Switch over from Google to Good Search and put in our charity name, and they pay us money when you surf the web. Please can be sure you've got one of these miracle lists. Okay? If you are in the ministry, get this miracle list and just simply take the person through the first four and you'll get a huge deliverance out of the person. Just the first four. That's all you got to do. It works like 90-something percent of the time. It's phenomenal. I got two lists, of course. I send out a couple dozen of these a week. They're fantastic. There's my training course, 18 classes on deliverance. It's in the bookstore. Finding out what's going on in the 21st century, it's right here, the seven churches of Revelation in the bookstore. You can download this app on your phone if you want to and donate to us whenever you feel like it. Thank you. Please remember the uh, fourth Saturday of the month. It's important. We get our, our church prayer meeting here the Deliverance Center prayer meeting right here in the main sanctuary. Please come here and pray for our ministry. Uh, you know, we're getting attacked by the devil. We're getting a lot of tough deliverance cases coming in. But God is faithful. He will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escaping. Praise God. I like to escape crap myself. Uh, that's Arabic. Let's go to the next slide. Here it is, fourth Saturday of every month, important deliverance uh, training class next door in the small sanctuary, okay? The donation boxes are on the doors. Just put your donation in there. Thank you. Thanks for helping us pay these utility bills. They're huge during these months. You can, down, you can uh, donate on the website by going to the PayPal button there. Thank you. Please remember on your way to work in the morning, tune me in. I'm on 1010 AM Christian Radio. Been on there for 21 years. I do a lot of controversial stuff on the radio, so it's not like what I do on Friday nights. 7.30 AM, Monday through Friday, Saturdays and Sunday. My podcast is Sunday morning for my shut-ins. 
twitch.tv and you put in HCC ADC 9 o'clock. Ready to go. YouTubers, in addition to bailing me out on the finances, which I, again, I thank you for, you've got to set up an ambush team in your church, start picking off the sick people, and start your deliverance ministry. It's easy to do. There's a scripture for it. This deliverance service is the bomb. Rick and Stephanie, uh, powerful. Powerful. Wednesday night, 6 o'clock. You can send me an email, mike at hardcorechristianity.com. I'll send you all the information. I send out a couple dozen of these every week, too. I wrote three books. They're in the bookstore. I just picked up uh, a new batch of Plano Spirits. I just ordered another 500 of them in the bookstore. Uh-oh. Speaking of... Uh, my book, Plan of Spirits, Julie's teaching it on Tuesday nights. Okay? So, and uh, I've seen the, uh, the videos of it. It's awesome. People are just, boy, I'm so grateful for that. She's doing a fantastic job. I never thought anybody would do something like that, but just incredible. Hey, don't forget about this one Saturday night. Brother Mike, the other brother Mike. <laughs> There's a bunch of mics around here. Mike, Mike Carter and friends. Who are they? I don't know. You got friends. Uh, I never use that word friends. I just I just put brother Mike. I don't put friends on there because I don't. You never you should never lie to people. But there's a Zoom teaching on Saturday nights. You can't miss it, and it's a deliverance as well. Wow, Saturday, October fifth. Another one coming up. Our kids service. Fantastic. 10 o'clock, Saturday in the small sanctuary. Okay? I think it's next Saturday. Right? What's today? Saturday. Next Saturday? 27th. Next Saturday at 27th. All right? Yeah. <clears throat> I'm slipping. Next Saturday is the kids' service, and it is, I'm so grateful to have that service. It's fantastic. Tonight, we are on YouTube and Rumble, right now as I speak, I believe, and we'll be on these three platforms tomorrow or the next day or what have you, yeah, so replay the service. We're also on Odyssey. Okay, I come up with a Bible study uh, for you, I remember... The disciples came to Jesus. They said, Lord, man, all these incredible miracles, unbelievable. We noticed that you have, we noticed you've got a strange prayer life. It's weird. So they said, teach us to pray. That's what they said to him. And he said something that appeared to be insane. Uh, it says in the Greek text, have the faith of God. Is what it's actually said. That's what he said. Which is, uh, appears to be totally insane. Well, I, I thought, well, listen, if, if a Christian can supernaturally, through the Holy Ghost, receive God faith, I said, why couldn't they do the same with God's courage? I just made it up in my mind. Yeah. You can tell I'm a very skilled, experienced speaker. I make stuff up. So what it is is this. Let's go to phase one first, though. The natural man, and I'm talking about 90-something percent of Christians in the United States are like this. I'm describing them. It's embarrassing. The natural man doesn't receive the things of the Holy Ghost. They are moria. They appear absurd. They appear ridiculous to them. He cannot know them, uh, Greek word gnosko, understand, because they are spiritually discerned. Spiritually discerned, remember that phrase? 
To be carnally minded, Romans 8, carnally there is a Greek word, sarx, and it's a, that's a weird word. If you caught an animal and you stripped the skin off of it, that's it, sarx, fleshly is what he was talking about. And fleshly is, uh, phronema is your mental focus what someone focuses on with their thoughts. Their pattern of thinking revolving about, around something. You know, for example, a hobby. Uh, uh, yeah, sports. Sports. Uh, sex. Uh, whatever. Money. Could be anything. Sarks. Phronema. Fleshly. Things of the flesh your mind focuses on. To be carnally minded, focused, is, leads to death, death. But to be spiritually minded, okay? Now he's talking about death here, but notice it's not physical death. See that? It's right, spiritual death. See how he ties those two together there? To be spiritually minded, now he goes to pneuma pranama. Your mental focus is on spiritual things, not carnal, fleshly, lusty, human stuff, is what he's saying. Here's a bifurcation here. Okay. <clears throat> that is life and peace. Again, spiritual. Spiritual, not physical. Everybody dies physically. He's talking about spiritual life here. Then he says, Sarks again, fleshly, the fleshly mind that focuses on fleshly carnal things, phronema, is extra hostile to God. Right. And why would he use that word hostility? Because human beings viciously fight to control whatever they want to think about. And spirits do everything can, they, thing they can to help you do that. They drive you almost like cattle into a chute to go into the carnal natural world. Because when you're in there, you're not in the spirit world. That. Your mind, the fleshly mind, is hostile to God. It's, it's an enemy of God. Pretty strong language. Then he says, the fleshly mind that focuses on carnal stuff is not hupotasso. What does that mean? To subordinate two. Uh, the law says that Kleenex boxes have more authority than plastic bottles. Subordination. I subordinate to that. I submit myself to the pastor. I that kind of a mind will not submit to God. And you, you wouldn't believe, if you were in the deliverance ministry, you'd know how hard it is to get people that want to be delivered to stop focusing on carnal things. Why is that? Well, the soul kicks in, and when you focus on carnal things, your soul chips in with anger, frustration, lust, Bitterness, rage. Why? Because your carnal mind is an enemy of God. It's God's enemy. And it cannot subordinate. It's impossible. That's why if a born-again Christian doesn't renew the mind, they always relapse into what? Overeating, sex, drugs, pot, Alcohol. 
the fleshly carnal mind always relapses because it hates God and it won't listen. The carnal mind will not listen. I've told you this dozens of times before, but in my office I got my death sheet. Eight by ten. All the way down. Dead people. Dead people. Why? They had a Sark's fleshly pattern of mental focus. And they wouldn't change. And the devil killed them. Oh my. Some of them got weird deaths. Others of them were sicknesses, illnesses, diseases. Everybody in the world praying for them. They died. That's how it works. Don't shoot the messenger. A carnal, fleshly focused mind will not submit to God because it's God's enemy who won't subordinate, won't take orders, it won't follow instructions. Typical carnal, rebellious Christian, right? Romans 8, they that are in the flesh, sarks, fleshly people, carnal people, cannot aresco. What does that mean? That means to know what God wants you to do, and you're happy to do it. He wants me to do what? I'll do it. What, you need me to stop something? Yes, I'll do it. Nope. Here's your typical Christian. Well, let me think about that a minute. I don't know. I think we need a new pastor here. No, they need to replace you. You're a spiritual loser, and I'm doing a Bible study on you right now. People are not excited about the things of God, particularly when it comes to repentance and changing, because they live yeah, fleshly. Not good. Colossians 3, if you are risen with Christ, Paul said, Seek those things which are above. Now, a carnal Christian can't do that. They're always relapsing into what? Anger, bitterness, arguments, fighting, different things. A renewed mind looks here. It doesn't see this part. This is all crap. Look, there it is. Oh, boy. Set your affections. Whoa, now he's talking about the soul. First he talks about the mind, then he talks about the soul. Affections are emotions. If you go into a mega church in February, uh, a lot of them around town, they're going to be showing something on the big screen down there, and the, the place is going to be packed. What are they watching? The Super Bowl. There's no seats. The mega church. Somebody scores, usually the Chiefs. And everybody's screaming. Arisco, they're enthused. They're more excited than they've ever been. That touchdown is more exciting than their marriage, than their wedding night, than hitting a $10,000 lottery ticket at Circle K. It's hard to do. They usually pick those out. But anyway, that's a diff different Bible study. What are they doing? That's their affections, see? And you can tell what a person really means something to someone, what are really important to someone. Right. By what their, their affections are set on. You can tell, you can read them like a book.
Lexi's in the office right there. My wife loves that dog. The dog loves her. I'm second fiddle. <laughs> but I don't need discerning of spirits or the gifts of knowledge to understand what kind of love goes on between that six pound dog and my wife. You know why? I'm just watching their affections. My wife shows more affection for that dog than him. <laughs> gotcha. I know, I know what you thought I was going to say. Yeah, I set you up. See that? I like set people up. Your affections de determine what you really care about. And Paul knows that. So he's saying, hey, your affections. Hi. Wow, you're something. Ooh, my goodness. I feel good about that. Gosh, that feels good. A hostile mind can't do that. A person that focuses on carnal earthly things, they don't know how to do it. They can't do it. It won't submit. A carnal mind is hostile to God, an enemy of God. Let's take a couple quick examples. I want to encourage you through the life of Thomas. John chapter 20, Thomas, one of the 12, was not with them when Jesus visited them. What's this talking about? Yes, yeah, post-resurrection, right? Before he went home. And <clears throat> now get this. Thomas had been with Jesus for three or four years. He had heard him teach numerous times about his death and resurrection. He was going to return from the dead. Thomas had heard that over and over again. From who? Somebody like Brother Mike? Oh, far from it. The living Christ himself had explained to Thomas numerous times and had proven that everything he said was valid because Thomas, in three or four years, had literally seen thousands of people getting healed, thousands being delivered. God only knows how many resurrections he had seen with his own eyes. He was there during the Sermon on the Mount. He was there when he yelled, Lazarus, come forth. Go ahead, man. He was standing right there. Thomas, oh, buddy. Thomas, a man. What are you doing? I've been a counselor, as you well know, for over 40 years. You wouldn't believe, on second thought, yes, you would, the power of how you were raised. You wouldn't, you wouldn't believe it. How you were raised is of greater power on a human being than Christ. Thomas raised with, with parents oh, skeptical, you know, critical, nitpickers. 
Dad was an unaffectionate, unloving nitpicker. Dad, look what I did. Oh, that's pretty good, but you didn't do that. Mom, Mom, could I have? No, well, you know what? You weren't good enough. You don't raise with those kind of parents. Oh, Ugh. Thomas, he saw every miracle in the book. You name a miracle. I dare you. He saw it. He was standing right there. Couldn't get his dad out of his soul. And as my dad used to say, I'm going to say, I, unless I see it, I'm not going to believe it. When did this happen? After Christ's ministry was over. He was standing there with the baskets handed out the basket, this guy would grab a loaf and another loaf would appear right in the basket. God Almighty, this guy took a piece of fish, another one would pop in there. He was standing right there. Something's sick here. Something's wrong. Something's really wrong. You forgot all that? Unless I, hey, I'm, I got to, nope. I'm not going to buy it. My dad, my dad doesn't buy it either. Where's your dad? Oh, he's dead. My twin brother's around, but my dad's dead now, but he's not dead. My, my dad's still in here. My parents are still in here. Uh, I will not believe. What? There it is. I will not believe. You were there feeding five thousand. You were there when he walked on the water? You thought it was a, a spook? He climbs in the boat? You were on the boat! You saw four years of that? And this is your final conclusion in life? Come on, man. Elizabeth. <laughs> People are sick. Why? The carnal mind is an enemy of God. It will not subject to the law of God. It cannot subject to it. Well, Brother Mike, I've never seen one miracle. Hey, Thomas blew you away. He saw 50,000 miracles, I would guess. I mean, that could be a low number, couldn't it? My God. The Savior of the world. Oh, it had to have been more than that. Eight days later, they're all gathered together. This time, Thomas is there. And suddenly, the doors were shut. Why? Look at that. They were still in hiding. They were all scared. The Jews were looking for them. The Jews hated them. They feared for their lives. They were all hiding. The doors were shut. They're all locked. Hey, the Holy Ghost doesn't, doesn't need a door open. <laughs> I don't think so. Peace to you. Oh, man. What a great statement. Huh? I, when, when people look at the word screw up in the dictionary, is your picture in there? Uh, it is, isn't it? Guess what? You got Thomas beat. Nobody in here 
Nobody is as pitiful as Thomas. None of you. Not even close. He's a hundred times worse than you are spiritually. And he had all that. You had none of it. None of it. I never saw anybody raised from the dead. I never saw anybody walk on water. I never have, I swear it. I mean, I got bread in my refrigerator, but I got it at fries. And get it out of a box. And then another one appeared there. Took that. Well, there's another one. Creative miracles. I never saw it. Thomas did. He saw it all. All of it. Peace to you. The result of Calvary. God is not mad at you anymore. <laughs> wow. Jesus says to Thomas, hey, Thomas, look. Listen, I, you didn't see me, but I heard what you said. See, you don't see the Holy Ghost. No one ever has, but he hears everything you say. He hears you in private. Yes, he does, when you're alone. Uh -huh. I'm an old man now, but I've developed a highly technical skill as I've gotten older, uh, I talk to myself. And sometimes I forget that while I'm talking to myself, going over a verse or a scripture or something, I'm being heard. Uh, but I don't see anybody. Hello? Thomas had been heard, and he said something unfaithful. He was an unbeliever after he had seen 50,000 miracles. How can that be? The carnal mind is an enemy of God. It does not subject yourself to the laws of God, and it is not able to. Thomas, put your fingers in there. I heard what you were saying the other day. Remember last week I heard you? Sick of here. Thomas, he pulls his, he pulls his uh, whatever they wore back then, tunics. He pulls his tunic up and says, stick your hand right here. See that? Did Thomas do it? Ah, no way. He just fell to the floor. Four years of miracles. Four years of seeing the unbelievable. And he is still an unbeliever. He's a thousand times worse than any of you. You got to stop being so hard on yourself. You know, you got to stop nitpicking yourself like Thomas's dad. Why don't you get rid of him? Why don't you just divorce your parents? Hey, your heavenly father's your parent now, not your mom and dad. They're just your mom and dad. You need a father, not a mom and dad. Stop beating yourself up. You look like Smith Wigglesworth compared to Thomas. Is anybody listening to me? I'm trying to get somebody encouraged. <laughs> Golly. How do you see all the miracles and you're still an unbeliever? How does that work? The carnal mind is... Then, Thomas redeems himself huge. He makes a statement basically unparalleled in all the Bible. It was the first disciple and the first person to mention the deity of Jesus Christ. He was the first one, and he was the biggest loser. Why? He grew up in that family where everybody was criticizing everything and looking down on stuff, and all oh, that didn't happen. I, that's not going to happen. No, no, they're not going to make it. No, they won't come through. Everything was a downer.
Thomas. Thomas absorbed it into his soul. Every time something good happened to him, you know what the first thing he said was? How long is that going to last? You ever met anybody like that? Huh? They're monster downers. You need to get rid of them quick. You need to get away from them. Do anything to get away from them. They always say negative things. This goes good. They see the worst of it. Run! You need a doubting Thomas like you need another hole in your head. No! He had been contaminated by the way he was raised. Don't be hard on yourself anymore. You're in this verse. Right here. You believe me because you've seen? Again? You don't get it. You got Thomas beat by a mile. You never saw anything he saw, practically. And yet you believe. He saw everything and didn't believe. That puts you here, Tommy down there. Why? The way he was raised was a cancer to his soul. He became a chip off the old block. Something good's going to happen. Yeah, but Thomas lives his whole life with a but. Things are going well now, but. Crap. Am I helping anybody? You need to stop being so hard on yourself. You make Thomas look like nothing. Let's take another look at it. The carnal mind. Oh gosh, it's horrible. Matthew 28, post-resurrection, right? The 11 disciples went into Galilee to a mountain where Jesus told them to go. The mount of of the ascension. When they saw him, oh, saw him, they worshiped. Now, notice this. They didn't start worshiping until they saw him. You see that? You're way ahead of the disciples. So are you. So are you. You know why? You were worshiping God this week and you didn't see him. That puts you here and them down there. You need to stop being so hard on yourself. Come on now. When they saw him, they didn't do it before. They worshipped him. Wow, what does that mean? Total blasphemy. Only God could be worshipped according to the Old Testament law. If you worshipped anything other than God, that was Idolatry. What's this saying here now? Jesus Christ is divine. What? Distazzo. What does that mean? What does distazzo mean? Shall I use orange or green tonight? Let's see. Orange might be better. No, I think green. But no, if people like orange, but I think is 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 what do I want to? What am I doing right now? Doubting. I'm doubting. Gustavo, huh? 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 Have you ever seen anybody that just vacillates all the time? Makes you sick to your stomach, doesn't it? Can't stand them. They can't make up their minds. Drives you nuts. You ever work with anybody like that? You can't get anything done. (laughs) 
Now, let me get this straight. You guys saw 50,000 miracles. You saw numerous resurrections, right? You saw Christ walking on the water twice. Did you? Yeah. You saw, you were in a boat in the middle of a hurricane that teleported there to shore. You were in a teleported boat. Right? Is that right, Mr. Disciple? How many? Eleven of them? Oh. Let me get let me get that straight. Right? You were there a few days ago when he appeared in the midst of you. Remember that? Yeah, I do remember that. Yeah. You remember he he told Thomas, look at the nails in my hand. Look at the holes. Look at that. Look at that. Stick your hand in there. You were there, right? Yeah, yeah, we were there. We were there. Yeah. Some doubted he's standing right there. You're kidding. Somebody slapped me. You got to be kidding. This is supernatural, miraculous, satanic doubt. You're a believer and you haven't seen a fraction of what they saw. I guarantee it. Not a fraction. You. You. I know you. You haven't seen a fraction of it. He's standing right there. He's standing right there. And they're asking, really? Are you sure? Is that, is this a, what? Is it orange, green, orange, green, orange, green? Really? Four years of that? And you're, he's standing right there. And you're going, what? I don't know. I'm not, well, I'm not sure, but I'm not going to say anything. I'll just whisper what my dad told me. Are they talking about Thomas? Oh, God. They couldn't be. I don't want to believe that. I put it out of my mind. Couldn't have been Thomas still doubting. Couldn't have been. Must have been the other ten. I talked myself into it. I believe in miracles, but I don't believe in that kind of miracle. Thomas doubting again. I just couldn't couldn't go there. Couldn't get there. You gotta be you gotta stop. Stop being so hard on yourself. You're here. The disciples are down here. Praise God. Don't you see that? Don't you, don't you understand? To whom much is given, much is required. The disciples had everything. You've had nothing compared to them, yet you believe. They didn't. You've got to stop being so hard on yourself. It's got to stop it, period. It's got to stop. Some doubt it. Unbelievable. Uh oh, how about these two clowns? There they are. They're on the where? The Emmaus Road, Luke 24. Jesus pops in again. They don't recognize him. <laughs> they tell him the story. They tell Jesus the story of his life. <laughs> I'm sure that was information he needed. They told him about everything, man. He got arrested, the Jews, the Romans. He got butchered. He died on Calvary. And he told us a hundred times he was going to be raised from the dead, but none of us believed it. Now there's supposedly reports and rumors of him being raised from the dead. Oh, my gosh. Because we, we thought he was going to be the, the king of Israel and, and get us out from this Roman bondage, but he didn't do it. We thought he was going to be the savior of the world. So they told him the whole story as they're walking. The Mass Road. Remember that? You read that? Try it. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. 
You fools and otios. What is that? You, your mind, the carnal mind, is hostile to God. It's an enemy of God. You fools. Wow. Slow of heart. Oh, gosh. You know what? <clears throat> There's got to be like, I don't know, 200,000 Christians running around the United States that was supposed who were supposed to get the gift of healing and never got it. You know, there's probably like several hundred Christians running around the United States that should have put John Lake to shame. Oh, man, I can still hear my mother talking to me. Why did you do it that way? Yeah, I told you. To. I can still hear her voice. I can still hear the bullies in fifth grade. I can still hear them. Hey, fatty. Hey, stupid. I can still hear him. I can still hear him. I'm 50 years old. I still hear the voices when I was in fifth grade. All these Christians should have had all these amazing gifts. Why? They were superior to the disciples. They saw everything and didn't believe. You saw virtually nothing and you believed. I mean, you got to stop being so hard on yourself. See, you're slow of heart to believe. When you keep hearing those critical voices in your subconscious, Thomas, Thomas, buddy, no. No, your dad's dead. Why don't you renew your mind? Why don't you, why don't you leave your dad? See? A man leaves his family and gets married and cleaves to his wife and they become one flesh. Man, I'll tell you what. <clears throat> I do marriage counseling. You wouldn't believe the marriage counseling nightmares I've been through of married couples who don't get rid of <laughs> the in-laws. The in-laws. Yeah. The in-laws. How do you get rid of the in-laws? Well, you call Doc Holliday. Spiritually, you've got to get rid of these people. Do you keep loving them? Of course, you love everybody, but these people have got to go. Where you're going to end up like Thomas. No amount of miracles 
is ever going to help you. Well, if I could just see a miracle, then I believe. You know, you're a liar. Thomas saw 50,000 and didn't believe. Read it. Not making this stuff up. I'll let you know when I'm making something up. <laughs> Slow of heart. Why? Because that's the way you were raised. Thomas was, are you sure? He used to say that a lot. I'm going to do this now. You sure? I don't know. I'm not, I don't know. Really? Uh, that's how he used to talk. Really? He cock his head. Translation, I don't believe you. I don't believe anything. I hear my dad talking to me. No. You know what happened after that? They ran. They had dinner with him. Hey, why don't you stay with us tonight? It's getting dark out. It's getting dangerous out there. There's criminals out there. Back in those days, I mean, those, those cities were like a lot of our cities. Detroit, Baltimore, San Francisco, you know, Oakland, Compton. You don't go out at night. You're going to get robbed or killed. If you're lucky, you get raped. They said, hey, why don't you stay with us? You can't leave now. It's too dark. There's robbers out there, killers, murderers, rapists. So Jesus sat down and he had dinner with them. Remember that? Everybody's read that story, right? Yeah. And suddenly, he's gone. What do they do? Exactly what they told him not to do. They leap off the floor and bolt out of the hut. Where did they go? To go and to see the other disciples because they knew where they were hiding. Everybody was in hiding. Suddenly, there it happens again. Boom, he's right in the middle of them. What did he say to them? The same thing he's saying to you now. Hey, my heavenly father is not mad at you. He doesn't look at you like your dad did. He doesn't see you like your mother did. He doesn't see you like those bullies in fourth grade. He doesn't see you that way. Peace to you. God's not mad at you anymore. He's not upset with you. He's not looking at you critically like your parents did. Why don't you stop being hard on yourself? What? Oh, no. No, wait a minute. Hold on a second. This had happened before. He pops in. He pops in again. Same crew. The same group of imbeciles are in this group that was in the other one when he popped in. And they're what? Thrilled to see him. Oh, they're so full of faith and love. Thank you, Jesus, for showing up again. We missed you. Not on your life. Not these morons. They were they were about to faint with fear. Philip cried out, Elizabeth. And they were frightened, Emphibus. They were scared, Max. Oh, you're not getting it. You're not listening to me. <clears throat> Years before that, they're on a boat in the Sea of Galilee, and suddenly a storm pops up. Well, Jesus stayed at the shore to do some strength. He had a strange prayer life. And it says here he knew through the gifts of the Spirit 
they were in trouble. So he hops out on the water and it says he was going so fast, he almost passed them. They looked out and saw him walking on the water and guess what word was used? This one. They were panicked. Panicked in fear. It says they thought it was a phantasma, a, a phantom. They thought it was a water spirit, a demon that lived in the water. They were petrified. Remember that story? Okay. Two or three years later, they had improved zero. Nothing had gotten any better in spite of seeing another 40,000 miracles and Lazarus coming out of the tomb. They saw it. They saw Peter's mother-in-law. They saw Brother Jarius' daughter raised from the dead. They saw they were standing there. Two years later, they're still panicking. Over what? Seeing Jesus. He's a spook. See, when you're, when you're raised in an environment of criticism, you're raised in an environment where these siblings get better benefits than you did. These, these brothers and sisters, they were liked better than you. They got special favors. They got encouragement. They got money. They got privileges you didn't get. The demons simply mold your mind into this ship of negativity that floats out at sea and never lands at port. Oh my God, we're still floating at sea. Oh no. Oh no. There's Jesus. Oh no, he can't. No! Petrified. Says they almost fainted. Wow. Oh, man. They thought they saw another spirit. That's what happened on the boat. Two years later, they were no better. You gotta start being stop being so darn hard on yourself. You think you're bad? You're chicken feed. This is bad. These people are bad. He goes through the same routine he did when he got in the boat two years earlier. He says almost exactly the same thing to him. Oh. What's wrong with you? Why are you all shook up? Come on. Hey. What's causing your problem? What's causing your problem? Now we're down to the nitty gritty of your Mickey Mouse Christian life. How'd you learn to think like that? You were raised to fail. Yeah, hey guy. Yeah, you were raised to see women as, you know, second class citizens, expendable, something to be disrespected. Why? Your dad cheated on your mom. Your dad yelled at your mom. You sit right there watching them fight all day. You learned to disrespect women. Of course you did. I did. I did. 
My mother was second fiddle to everything my dad did. She was the last person to get any benefits. They were both drunks. I was the oldest sibling. What did, what, what did that mean? If I'm the oldest sibling, what do, what do I get to do? Oh, yeah, I get to wake up when I hear the crash in the living room. I'm the one that wakes up. My sisters kept sleeping. I get, up, I get up to go out and see if my mother's getting beat up again in a drunken stupor. I was trained as a child to see women garbage. Is anybody listening to me? Is anybody listening to me? My YouTube guys are. I know that. You're trained to be a failure in your mind. I remember one day I was in like seventh grade, I was thinking to myself, I can remember I was out in the front yard. I was looking up and down the street and I was going, <laughs> I was thinking, I wonder why none of the other families have police cars at their house at night. I remember that thought popped in my mind. I couldn't figure out why they didn't have cops come into a domestic situation. Hey. And we got some, we got noise complaints. You know, how come they? What did I have to do? What did I need to do? Oh, man. I had to forgive my dad and get rid of him. I replaced him with my heavenly father. And no longer bothered me what he did. Didn't mean anything anymore. Thomas. No, he still had that ugh, mindset. The mindset of a loser. Genetics. Why do thoughts rise in your heart? What thoughts? Fear thoughts, panic thoughts, terror thoughts. Why are you doing that? Notice he said you? Are you reading it? You're doing it. Why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Notice he didn't say Satan, he didn't say demons, he didn't say fallen angels from the pit. Thomas, what are you doing? Thomas. I hope this isn't too deep for everybody, but this is... You know, this is real life here. You know, it happens to everybody. Name, it happened to Naaman, man. Wow. He was a big shot, a big deal. Oh, man, he was like Hollywood. He was like Wall Street, something like that. Hey. I talked to Elijah. He said, go down there and... Uh, Dunk yourself and your leprosy will disappear. Whoop, it's gone. Naaman goes, What? You got to be kidding. If I wanted to go dunk in a river, I would have gone to Syria and dunked in a clean river. Not this crap the Jews got. Mud, dirty fish. I go back home. Clear water there, stupid. Well, 
What happens then? In the mouth of babes, this super monster big shot, a slave says to him, hey, Naaman, if, could I make a suggestion, please, if you don't mind? You know, you mind if I say something? Go ahead. I'm pissed. Well, listen, we don't have anything to lose, and we got to go by the river anyway and to, to go home. Let's just, uh, you know, why don't we just go take a few dips? We got nothing to lose. What's the big deal? We take a few minutes. No skin off our nose. Why don't you? As somebody nobody heard of saved Naaman's life. He was going to die. Naaman comes down and goes, oh, all right, look, well, okay, we're here. That's right. All right, we're here. I think I'll go dip. Boop, he goes down seven. There he is. The Bible says he came out and his skin was better than an infant. It, would be, it was restored to infancy. If you could get rid of your stinking thinking from your family and how you were raised, you, you would become a monster of faith. You would have nothing blocking your thoughts. You would become a spiritual animal. Every time the devil saw you coming, boop, he'd fill his depends. Whoa, I need a switch. Let's change those. Oh, it's your thoughts that ruin your spirituality it's your thoughts that stole your anointing and ripped you off of your destiny whose thoughts the devil thought no yours what happened cora oh no demonic thoughts entered his mind hey listen this moses guy I mean, he's not cutting it anymore. He's been around too long. He's been the boss too long. We're good enough to be the boss. I want to be the boss. Yeah. I want to be the boss. God Almighty. You know what it says in the Hebrew? They fell down through this gigantic hole alive into hell. They went to hell before they died. Why? They're sitting around the campfire. See? About eight of them. Seven or eight of them. They're sitting there. You know what? Mo and they start running Moses down. You ever did that at church? Have a, have a little session over the pastor or something? They started saying negative things about him. You know, he's getting old... Uh, He's been leading us around in weird directions. Uh, we can do a better job. Yeah, that's it. We can do a better job. Those are the thoughts. Oops. Wow, King Saul, man. A Christian serial killer. What in the world? Look at Moses. What a gutless coward. It says from the burning bush that Jehovah started to get angry at him. What, what was angering God? What, what, what kind of bothers him? People who make excuses leads to what? Lack of courage. Cowardice. A lack of courage. Finally, on the fifth time, Moses says to Jehovah, send somebody else. He ran out of excuses. 
He just said, send somebody else. The yellow street, this wide. What happened to him? Hey, everybody in Egypt turned on him. He got rejected. You know, everybody that thought he was the greatest thing in the world now thought he sucked. He had to run for his life. He ended up in the middle of the desert being adopted by another family. He used to be the prince of Egypt. He had anything and everything he wanted. When he wanted, he just snapped his finger. Boop, he got it. You know what he's doing now? Bah, following bah, sheep around. What a loser. What happened? Moses' mind had adjusted to being a nothing and a nobody. He was no longer the prince of Egypt here. Now he was a sheep herder. Have you ever been around sheep? Yeah, I have. I visited my relatives in Illinois. They got cattle and cow, they got sheep. I'd never been on a farm before, so I'm just walking around the out in the pasture area where all the sheep are. There's a lot of them. They're all looking at me like I'm an idiot. They're just staring at me. Nobody says anything. <laughs> well, I hung around there for a while, and I finally got, you know, a little bit close to them. You know, and they did just looked at me like I was a Martian. And I wanted to pet them, but they would, they would, they didn't trust me. This one I reached out to pet, he, he turned around like that, and then he started pooping at me. I said, listen, you don't have to poop on me twice. I left the field. I went back to the house. I said, I, I wasn't interested in sheep after that. Never had any interest in sheep. Moses had hundreds of them. And he had become a sheep man in his mind. He went from here to here in his mind. Man, can you imagine that? You've been given a death sentence. You're going to die and go to hell. You're yelling at the cross next to you. There he is, the Savior of the world. He's yelling at him. He's cursing him. Why don't you save yourself? Why don't you save us? What are you doing, you coward? What's wrong with you? You're supposed to be a big shot. The other guy, same situation, same person, same circumstances, goes the other direction. The other guy hears him. Begging for his life. He hears the other guy. Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. The carnal mind is an enmity against God. Over here, over here, the guy repented of it. The dying thief on the cross, a career criminal, whose parents had told him 5,000 times, stop stealing crap from the Romans. They're going to catch you and kill you. You're going to die. Stop doing it. What's for dinner tonight, honey? Baby, were you out stealing today? Oh, thank God you're home. I worry about you every time you go out and steal stuff. And one night, he didn't come home. He had been told a thousand times, stop it.
time runs out on everybody. Jacob, we asked you, why don't you just get a, get a job? Why do you have to steal? I know it's easy money, I know but listen, you're going to get caught. You're going to get killed. Why don't you just get a labor job like your cousin did or your brother, he, he's working here. Why don't you go do that? That doesn't pay enough. I don't want to put that kind of... I like a smash and grab. Yeah, but there's a price to pay for that. Sooner or later, the Romans are going to catch you. They're going to get you. Stop stealing from the emperor. Screw them. Ah, I'm good. Both of them. This one, yelling at him, mocking him, angry, bitter. The other one could hear his mother hanging on the cross. Son, what you're doing is wrong. The Torah says, Stealing is a sin. Honey, I'm worried about you. I love you. And the other thief, oh, God, my dad was a thief. Grandpa was a thief. I stole something. This is wrong. I'm getting screwed. I got railroaded. Hey, you, Savior, get me off the cross, you total loser. Why don't you save yourself if you're a big deal? Can't you see that? How you're raised determines your destiny. This one said no. This one heard her voice. Man, I was wrong. I shouldn't have stolen. He's right. I'm wrong. One of the thieves didn't have a carnal mind that was an enemy of God. The other one heard him and died anyway and went to hell with Korah. How could that thief be here and the disciples here? He didn't see all those miracles. He was too busy stealing stuff. Somebody needs to stop being so hard on themselves. Right? What does God want you to do? Let's go find out. Everybody has this verse memorized. Hey. Since you're superior to the disciples, these disciples fit right in with you. You didn't see all their miracles, yet you would still believe. Hey, that puts you up here. They saw all those miracles and didn't believe. What's that telling you? Nothing's going to hurt you if you change your thought life. Joshua told the people, fear not. Do not be dismayed. Be strong and of good courage. What's the Lord promising to do for you? Hey, man, peace to you. Peace to you. Peace to you. Peace to y'all. The Lord will do this to all of your enemies. Dave is dying on his deathbed. He appoints Solomon as, as the king. His older brother got screwed. That's the way he saw it. He ended up dead. David said, Solomon, my son, be strong and good courage. Do it. 
do what's right. Fear not. Don't be like the disciples. They were scared all the time. No, you. My God will be with you, Solomon. Remember, he's a kid now. He's not an adult, he's a kid. He will not fail you nor forsake you until you have finished all the work for the service of the house of the Lord. Luke 12, Jesus said, quote, I say to you, my friends, okay, he's not talking to sinners, he's not talking to the Romans, he's not talking to the Pharisees, or the scribes, or Sadducees, is he? No. My friends, you are my friends. Do not forbear. Be terrified. Be afraid. Be anxious about people who can kill your body. Because after they kill your body, they can't do anything more to you. I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. Fear him which after he has killed the body has the exousia authority to cast into Gehenna the fires of hell, the lake of fire. I say to you, fear him. Listen, if you've got an anxiety disorder, why don't you trade it in? <clears throat> you know why Christians don't serve God? They don't have any fear of him. There's too much grace, too much love. They don't have any fear. Well, if I get mad, I'm just going to let them have it. They don't care what God thinks. They have no fear of God, so they just run their mouth. The dying thief on the cross, he had no fear of God. He's, he's reaming out Jesus. He had no fear of God. The other one, he did. He had fear of the Lord. Christians don't have that in America. Why? Too much preaching about peace, happiness, love, and abundant life. Oh, it's so nice. Everything's so sweet. <laughs> Hi. Stupid. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives. I give it to you. What the heck does God want you to do? Come on now. What is it? He wants you to change your thought pattern. You're superior to the disciples. You're up here, they're down here. You're better than them. To whom much is given, much is required. You've been given a fraction of what Thomas was given. I mean, it can't, you can't even see it. It's so small. Why do you think God honors people's faith so much? Because they never had all those miracles. They never saw all those things. You've never seen any of that stuff. I never saw into heaven. John did. Right? Paul did. <clears throat> James, Peter, and John saw the transfiguration. Wow, what a sight that would have been. I wouldn't know. I haven't seen it. But I know it's spectacular from what I read. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. God. 
That's why people with childlike faith, it's so easy for them to get an answer to prayer and to see miracles. Kids don't have to see everything. They just believe. <laughs> Somebody's got to stop being so hard on themselves. If God forgave these 11 losers, you are a slam dunk. They were given everything. Everything. Right? I mean, these kids that grow up and be in their families, they, they don't understand what real people are. They, they've been given everything. Those guys were given everything. They screwed it up. There's enormous hope for you. What do you got to change? One thing. How you think. Orange, green, or green, or green, green or orange? Orange, you want green, you want orange? Sure, which one's better? If you have faith and doubt not. See this fig tree? Okay. See how it withered from the roots up when I cursed it? I sure do. I pointed it out to you. Well, I'll tell you what. You see that fig tree? That's Mickey Mouse. If you Believe and doubt not. You shall not only do what I did to that fig tree. A fig tree amounts to nothing. There's tree, uh, trees everywhere. Just as one tree. It's no big deal. But that, if you have faith and doubt not, you will not only do that which is done unto the fig tree, but if you shall say to, look over there. Oh, a mountain. Were you raised by a bunch of people, foster parents, step parents, whatever, that trained you to doubt? Were you raised that way? Huh? Okay. So were they. I'm almost done. Jesus says to Philip, hey, Phil, come here for a minute. Now, we got thousands of people out there. They've been sitting out there for days listening to me teach. We need to get them fed. Uh, the Bible says he was testing Philip. He says, what, what do you think we ought to do? How are we going to feed these people? Well, Philip... Philip turns into his dad. He was raised by his dad. He was like an accountant, you know. He was like a very concrete, analytical thinker. Philip goes, well, let me think. What would my dad say? Oh, I know. Well, there's, I looked in the bag, and Judas had left 200 denarian in the bag. We got 200 left from Judah, Judas skimming. But what in God's name is that among so many? His dad came out of him. His dad was, okay, okay well, hold on a minute. What, two plus two, three plus three, what? No, that doesn't add up, huh? No, nah, I don't believe that. 
No, I want to see that. I want to feel that. I want it to add up. Man, it got to make sense. I'm a logical person. Philip was logical. He was a thinker. He's the one with the IQ of the group. Another goof comes running up. Hey, there's a kid here with a sack lunch, but what possible good is that going to do? See that? Down. See that? What am I doing here? I'm talking about your run-of-the-mill born-again Christian. That's exactly what they do. The little kid there, he wasn't raised by Philip's dad. He just comes walking up with a sack lunch. Hey, you need, need a few 50,000 people? Here you go. It's all good. You can have my lunch. See? He wasn't raised in Philip's family. He didn't have a mind control spirit in his head, causing him to analyze everything and then come to the conclusion, ah, it's not going to work. That's no good. Jesus was testing him, it says. He said this to test him. Because he already knew what he was going to do. What was he trying to do there? What am I trying to do right now? Get you to think about your possibilities in your life. You've been missing. You were supposed to have been one of those faith healers I was talking about. Something's got to be done. Now. I'll close with this. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but considered himself of no reputation. Philip, what are we going to do? I don't know. Thomas, how you doing? I don't know. How about you? What about you? How about you? Why not you? God forgave these idiots? Why not you? Did you screw up like them? Not even close. You don't understand real failure. You don't get it. They get it. Monumental failures. The carnal mind is an enemy of God. It is not subject to the laws of God, and it cannot be. 
Let's pray.